I'm happy to be here. I live in New York. Um, I'm new on the board of Active Surveillance Patients International. And, uh, you know, I just want to thank my fellow members for asking me to give this presentation. So um, three years ago at age 62, uh, my urologist who I had been seeing for urinary issues and regular PSA tests told me that my PSA had risen to five, uh, the highest I had ever had. And um, I knew nothing then about PSA, um, nor prostate cancer. And so I just went along with his recommendation that I have an MRI followed by a biopsy. I had that MRI, um, which my doctor later showed, said there was an area of concern. But he proceeded actually to give me a random biopsy, also known as truss, for all of you who know, um, that uh, really just covers you know, 1% of, uh, of the gland. And I uh, had 12 samples taken. Uh, he later called me, told me that two out of the 12 samples showed low grade cancer, uh, described the samples as Gleason 6s. It's the first I ever heard of that. Uh, he scheduled an appointment with me a week later and said he'd talk to me about my treatment options. So I'm somebody who needs to be informed um, before I'm told something by any kind of authority. So I didn't really waste any time and I, I did begin to research. And, you know, to be short, because I could probably write little, you know, chapters, I discovered all the options for treatments that he might tell me about. And I reached the conclusion on my own that um, my treatment was gonna be something called active surveillance that you know, I ran across either in a support group or through uh, research. And, um, and so at my next appointment, when he started to speak and tell me about number one, surgery, and I wouldn't have to worry about the C word um, anymore, then he explained radiation. And in a very small voice, um, you know, he said, well, we could possibly watch it. So I began and I said, well, have you ever heard of active surveillance? And he was really taken aback. Um, and he said, well, it's an option, but I would need a confirmation biopsy almost immediately, like within two months. So uh, with that, I became very quiet. Um, I left his office and I never returned. Um, reason, why was he suggesting another biopsy so soon? Uh, had he made some mistakes during the biopsy? Uh, why didn't he use the MRI to target suspicious areas? So I basically lost faith in him and I, I fired him. And I began then to consult with um, different doctors and specialists getting second and third opinions. Um, a bit of anxiety set in. Anxiety has been, I think, a theme running through our presentations. And um, I found I was you know, really unable to cope with the contradictory information I was getting, um, especially when I saw a very well-respected specialist at a well-respected institution here in New York who told me I should never have had a biopsy in the first place. Like, go figure. Um, why is he telling me that? And... Um, that made me crazy. So to alleviate my anxiety, uh, a close friend in California recommended I consult with a patient advocate he knew who helped me navigate um, doctor appointments and decisions I needed to make. And uh, eight months later, based on a Pyrates 4 reading of my first MRI, I did get a confirmation biopsy at um, Brigham Hospital in Boston and got an inbore trans perennial biopsy. So in bore uh, is inside the MRI tube, if anybody has not heard of that. So they, he actually took live pictures of my prostate while he was doing an MRI guided, guided biopsy. And the, the transperennial is approaching from the, in the groin area instead of from behind. And the result was basically nine benign samples, um, even though the MRI reading was a bit alarming, the one that he was working off of. So I, you know, because of this wonderful patient advocate I had, I eventually learned um, how to advocate for myself. And 
since that time, much of my research um, has been focused on nutrition. I attended a detoxification center in California where I began a weight loss and nutritional program in addition to detoxing from negative emotions, anxiety, stress, depression. And I learned basically that um, Gleason 6s don't grow. And the only, only protocol I needed was to watch for any aggressive cancers um, which may form in the future. So now I've developed my own active surveillance program, which includes regular PSA testing, annual MR, any, annual, semi-annual MRIs, um, digital rectal exams, uh, ultrasound imaging, and I keep up a good nutritional and exercise regimen. Um, I also regularly attend support groups and am on top, um, you know, I'm on top of the always changing world of this thing called prostate cancer. And just circling back to that specialist who, um, you know, first gave me great anxiety, who told me I didn't need a biopsy from a PSA of five. He, he actually later called me in a taxi and said he was speaking for himself because I didn't think he wanted to speak for the urology department. Um, but, uh, you know, I thought about that for a while and I said, well, yeah, now I know after all the research, you don't go from a PSA reading straight to a biopsy. Um, many of us on active surveillance know that. Um, however, if I had not had that biopsy and I didn't enter this world and met all of you and, you know, everyone I know, um, I wouldn't have changed my diet. I wouldn't have become healthier. Um, I had had a heart condition, so a heart healthy diet and exercise was good for me. And as my oncologist told me six months ago, you are likely gonna die from something else other than prostate cancer. So go get yourself a stress test, go get a colonoscopy. Um, and I wouldn't worry if I were you. So, you know, just to sum it up, um, I would offer these, these suggestions. Um, after listening to your doctor's advice about anything you've undergone, and suggestions that he or she may have in going forward. Uh, never make any decisions on the spot. You always have time. Uh, it's a slow growing cancer. You always have time to seek out information and consult with others, uh, many of whom have been in your situation. Two, um, consider your doctor as your partner, not the be all and end all. Not he, the doctors aren't magicians. They often don't have time to read the 1700 clinical trial studies that are going on. So they're not up on the latest information sometimes. So if they have an attitude like it's my way or that's it, it's time to find another doctor, in my opinion, my humble opinion. Um, knowledge is your friend. So being informed as much as possible on your own, especially when talking with others and seeking other points of view is really I find priceless. Um, four, uh, find your own way towards warding off anxiety. Um, I need to take this advice myself often. Um, taking a break from your, you know, the reality of what you're going through, meditation, exercise, activities you enjoy. Um, my fellow board member and friend Bill just sent me a DVD of, uh, you know, for relaxation. So I'm uh, I'm looking forward to seeing that. And lastly, um, you know, there are tons of opinions um, I've found about this and a lot of conflicting information about there. And I would just say, I would advise to try to develop a sense of what we call discernment, um, choice, you know, choose your sources wisely. Um, there's an ever-changing protocol for active surveillance and, um, we also know never to get a biopsy based on solely on a PSA. And uh, I think with that, um, and I'm not a doctor, so that, you know, caveat is that uh, I'm not here to give medical advice, but this is just uh, from my experience. So thank you all, I appreciate it.